This episode of Quite Frankly was made possible by our friends from MacFun, great photo editing software for Mac. Go to our special MacFun community website for exclusive deals just for you guys. Hey guys, and welcome to this episode of Quite Frankly. Now, today I want to talk about something that's called the Wacom Cintiq. Now, what is a Wacom Cintiq? You see it over here. It's a big screen where you can draw on. Now, you just, you just have to see it to believe it. It's amazing. But they've been on the market for quite some time. Now, I never bought a Cintiq because with the older versions, I always found there was a little bit la uh, lagging. That means that you draw and you see the pointer coming a little bit behind it. Now with the new series, there's no problem at all. Now, you might wonder, do you really need a Cintiq for every workflow? Well, of course not. You don't need a Ferrari for every kind of car driver, right? But the Cintiq has some very, very cool features which you don't have in a normal Intuos. Now, let's see why I switched to the Cintiq. This is my old Intuos. And I've done a lot of retouching on this one. As you can see, it's almost like a mirror. So yeah, it's had its time and really nice. The problem was, as soon as the iPad Pro was released, I fell in love with drawing again. Now, when I was younger, I did a lot of drawings and I really liked it. But at one point, I just lost interest. And with digital drawing, I never really felt that it felt natural, you know? And as soon as the Apple iPad Pro was released with the Apple Pencil, I immediately fell in love with it again. So I wanted to do drawing also on my Mac. And then you have something called eye-hand coordination. So in other words, you look at your monitor and you draw and believe me, <laughs> I tried. I couldn't even draw a circle. I still can't draw a circle by the way, but I didn't even come close. I couldn't even write my name because you have that eye-hand coordination. So I was looking at the Cintiq and I was looking at the 13 inch. I really liked the idea of the 13 inch, but then in the shop I was looking at it and I was going like, mm, you know, it's maybe a little bit small. And I ended up with the 27 inch, so that's the biggest one. Now, let's look at how you can set this up. Now, for a lot of people, this will be your only monitor. So you do your emails on this, you do your surfing on it, and of course you do your retouching on it. But for some people, like me, I'm very, very critical with my work color-wise, but also with shadows. And what I found out is, although I love the Cintiq, I still find that in shadows, it blocks it up just a little bit. And of course I calibrated the Cintiq and I calibrated my main monitor. And still on the main monitor, I see a little bit more detail. Now, if you don't work with a lot of shadows, that's no problem at all. But I just love those really, really dark shots. So what I did is I actually created a desk situation where I can have my Cintiq and I have my BenQ monitor straight in front of my face where I can do my critical color work. So I can do all my tinting and I can still see all my shadows. The fun part is in some instances, I will actually use my Cintiq as the normal Intuos and just look at that screen while I do my retouching. Now let's talk a little bit how you use that two screens, because that's not clear for a lot of people. The Cintiq, of course, is your main screen. That's where Photoshop, Lightroom, Manga Studio, or Premiere, or whatever, it runs on the Cintiq, right? Now, I have three monitors. That one is my social media monitor, or National Geographic, or TLC, whatever I want to watch. And that monitor is my critical color monitor. And the Cintiq is the, the one where I retouch. Now there are different resolutions, like if you go for a Cintiq 24, 22 or the 13, you have a lower resolution than most monitors. That means if you do a mirroring, you get scaling artifacts. And that isn't perfect, because if you see scaling artifacts, it's very difficult to judge sharpness or color or you just see the transitions a little bit differently. So you have to make sure that both are exactly the same resolution. Now I'm a lucky guy, I have the 27 inch, the big boy. And my resolution is exactly the same as my BenQ, so I can use mirroring. Now, if you're not that lucky, how can you make sure that this image is also there? Let's first look at Lightroom. Now, Lightroom for a lot of people is the place where all your images live. It's the same for me. This is where all my images stay. I do my smart albums, I do my markings. Everything is done in Lightroom. Now, in Lightroom, you have an option here on the window. And it will actually tell you screen mode. That's easy, but also secondary display. Now, as soon as I do secondary display show, as by magic, there I have my full screen preview. And it's this image. 
So now I have one image over there and one image over here. I can still work on this image, do it full screen, do it uh, in the normal size, but that image stays the same. It doesn't zoom. You see this? This zooms and then my second monitor doesn't zoom. Now this is really cool because if you select images and select a few images from a photo shoot, you always check the focus on the eyes. Now imagine this. I also want to check, of course, my composition. There we go. Okay, I love this image, really cool, let's zoom in. Yes, the eyes are sharp, let's zoom out. It can be a very tedious process. Now, I was not used to anything else, so I was going like, yeah, that's normal. Now watch this, that monitor shows me the total composition and I can just go through my images. You see them both changing, right? Now watch this, if I put this one on 100%, I can very quickly go to my images and check composition on the top monitor and check if my images are in focus on the bottom monitor or on the Cintiq. So this is very easy, I can very quickly see, okay, the eyes are in focus, the eyes are in focus, here, and I on that monitor I can see the whole image. So I love this workflow, this is really fast. Okay, now let's say you don't work in Lightroom, but you work in Capture One. Is it also possible in Capture One? Yes. So let's close Lightroom and let's open up Capture One. And there we go. Capture One has a similar option. Let's say this is my image. I can go to Window and I can, for example, create a workspace. And let's say Dual Monitor Large Viewer. Now I have all my images here. And I have my viewer on that monitor. That of course is a problem because I want it on the other monitor. But luckily with Capture One you can just track this window. So now I have my images over here and I can do my critical adjustments on that monitor. Okay. Can you do it differently? Yes, of course. I can do it on default. There we go. And I can also make, for example, a floating tool which I can put on that monitor, but also the viewer. Now the viewer is really nice because now I have two options. I can do this one here and I can actually go for example to 100% on this monitor and that monitor still shows me my image as it is. So the viewer changes and it's exactly the same as in Lightroom as you see here. So with Capture One we have two options. We can put the images all here and the preview there, but I prefer this one. This is much better. Okay, now here you go, like, yeah, Frank, and how Photoshop, how do you do this in Photoshop? Photoshop has a really cool feature too. So let's go from this image into Photoshop. So Photoshop is now starting up. Let me close the viewer from Capture One, so you guys see that it's actually Photoshop I'm using. Okay, now this is my image in Photoshop. Now, let's say I want that image also on that monitor to check my uh, composition and I want to zoom in here, work on the Cintiq and sometimes just watch over and see what I'm doing. In Photoshop you can go here to Window, you go to Arrange and you see here an option called New Window for Danique. Danique is our model from today. I can now press on New Window and what you see is it opens a new window. Now these two are exactly the same. What I can now do is and I can drag this on my second monitor. Now this is a new document. That means that I don't have a live preview update, but what I do have is something totally different. If I go to this one, I can go to 100%, I can do my critical retouching and that one stays the same. So I see my retouching here and I see my, pro, uh, my total composition over there. That's pretty handy. Now, if you update something on this image, it won't appear immediately. Let's say I take black paint. You see that that monitor doesn't change yet, right? But as soon as I let go, there we go. And now you see that the top monitor is updated. So this is also a very simple way in Photoshop to control your two monitors with a preview on the top one and here. Okay, so let's say we want even more. We close these. Don't save. And now, of course, I have two monitors with exactly the same resolution. So what I want to do is, of course, mirror. The problem with a lot of Macs is, and 
it's actually the Mac user because this option has been in the Mac for many, many years. If you go to your system preferences and you go to displays and you go to arrangements, you see my three displays. So display one, my main display, the Cintiq, and of course that display. If I do mirroring, what you will see happen is that all three monitors are exactly the same and I don't want that. I th this is very confusing for me because I want my social media on that one. That one also has normally a different resolution. So this is not the way that I want to work. So let's change that back again. Mirror displays off. There we go. Now what a lot of people don't know. Oops. Mirror displays off. There we go. What a lot of people don't know is you can press the command key on your keyboard and you can actually drag your active monitor just on this monitor. The fun part is, now it only mirrors these two monitors on top of each other. And my third monitor stays exactly the same. Now if you use an Apple TV and you also want to shoot tethered in the studio, and you want, for example, the Apple TV also on this, that's no problem at all. You hold the Alt key and you can move that over. So that's a very simple way of getting your monitors in sync. If you don't have the same resolution, you just use screen sharing. Uh, sorry, if you have the same resolution, you use of course mirroring. And if you don't have the same resolution, you did the tips I gave you before. So enjoy your Cintiq and we'll see you next time.